Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to show off the new Diablo quarterly update and I'll give you guys my thoughts on this. Now, there are new gameplay videos to check out. I kicked it off right there with a little intro. We'll see more of these and I'm just going to kick it off with more gameplay because I think most of you guys want to see the gameplay content first and then we'll dig into the contents of as far as like how deep does this game go as far as customization and it's actually looking quite good. We're going to be looking at different modifiers on items specifically uh, but let's go and show off some of the newer gameplay that did get revealed over here and like I said there are several different up parts to this update but starting right off what they're showing is different uh, skills in the modifications with high intensity or large area that's the text that's over in like the top left. Keep in mind, everything is pre-alpha, everything can be subject to change. Uh, we are also listening to Path of Exile as well as Diablo soundtrack in the background. I'll throw in some of the audio here. So you guys can kind of hear uh, the other audio. What's really cool with this, to make it really feel like a next-gen game, you can see all of the different like shrubs, like the little grass, moving in the uh, gameplay when you're seeing some of the skills uh, react to it. But it's just showing some of the same skills uh, again and again, but it's showing with the amount of intensity, so maybe like basically extra area of effect or things that can modify uh, some of these as maybe um, things that we'll get as a progression or on items, which is gonna be kinda cool. We're also looking at ice armor. This is uh, a skill that I don't believe we've actually seen before. Um, technically in Diablo 2, we kinda had variants of like, you know, chilling armor and stuff like that. But for Diablo 4, some of these may be new skills that we are going to be checking out, um, or they might be modifying uh, existing skills. So this is like Earth Spike where something comes out of the ground. Cool stuff indeed. Uh, I'm not going to play every single video in its full entirety. I'm just going to give you guys kind of just a bite-sized variant of it. But I will link it down below for the entire like uh, blog post in case any of you guys do want to read every single thing. But I think a lot of you guys just wanted to see the new items uh, as well as some of the new gameplay. So let's go ahead and kick it off with the new magic items, which actually have skill rank. And this is actually really cool. I'm not going to read every single piece of text on screen. I'm just going to condense into like hopefully uh, about 10, 15 minutes here because there's a lot of stuff to uncover. So basically they state that like they want people to be able to mess around with like new skills. Like in Diablo 2, if you want to get a new skill, you have to put that hard skill point into it. And if you, uh, let's say, change your mind on it later down the line, uh, you're just kind of stuck with it, right? Unless you do a respect. What they're offering is basically the modifiers on items over here. Um, they are going to actually be able to have uh, plus ranks to X skill like you would have in Diablo 4. Um, now, depending on your class, this could be really, really big because one thing I really like with Diablo 2, and I hope this carries over, that you can get skills like, you know, you had Heart of the Oak, you, you had other, um, or was it the uh, Call to Arms, you could actually run skills from other classes, and I hope this makes a return. Curious to know what you guys think about this, or do you guys think it should only be for that specific class? Now, looking into the itemization, we also see there's a magic two-handed axe. So how the magic items work is it will have two modifiers, but the modifiers will be much larger, as in like the uh, effectiveness of the numbers will be a lot higher. So apparently blues may be viable. Um, definitely yellows will be viable, and we'll get into that in a minute here. But you can see that there's a slashing damage, so I'm wondering if that's going to be some sort of like uh, damage archetype. Like maybe you might have like elemental, you might have like fire, ice, you might have slashing, piercing, uh, a blunt weapon, uh, like more like a hammer base it would be like a blunt weapon. I'm not sure if this is going to really matter, but that's something that I did notice um, over here. But then also, previously level 40 was the highest. This is something that is different now. You can see there's level 44. They mentioned level 50, so level 50 may be max level in the game because they talk about what's called Paragon, which is going to be some new form of endgame content. So there is a occultist. Now, this is something completely new and different. I like this. It lets you extract a legendary power from a legendary item, converting it into a essence while destroying the item in the process. And they basically explain it via pictures here, and I'm going to use this little example because it's much better than reading every single piece of text. So you have this uh, pent up axe, it's a legendary and it's a slashing. The thing that's important is this orange text. So it says fury skills, which is barbarian's form of resource. Um, skills deal 4% more damage for every second you have, haven't have used a fury skill up to 24%. So it starts ramping up kind of like um, the fan of knives build. Um, and so it's going to do more damage. You can destroy it to gain the essence as a, like a consumable that you're going to be able to put onto another item. But what's interesting with this, it doesn't just have to be on your uh, like weapons. It doesn't have to be just for, let's say, axes. Um, so it takes that power, and you can see it's the exact same thing. All the orange text moved over, and now it says allowed weapon types. One-handed weapon, two-handed weapon, gloves, amulet, ring. But with the two-handed weapon, the power of that 
gets increased by 66%. So it's gonna favor putting it into a certain slot. Now, I'm not sure if it rolls on like which one of the allowed types rolls to be like a better number or if it's specifically like this one is always going to be good for let's say 200 weapons and an amulet. I don't know that for sure. Again, this is just something that I have noticed over here. So I think that would be interesting. I like, like, I like more complexity to a game uh, than less pretty much is what it comes down to. And this could mean that like, if the game happens to have some sort of like uh, auction house or something, maybe getting an item that rolls on a very specific allowed item type could be worth more or less depending on what it rolls. And I like that idea, it's kind of cool. Um, they did the same thing with this um, amulet here, but now what they're doing is they're getting that essence uh, of the legendary that they uh, destroyed and they're actually putting it on something else. So you can see there's a rare amulet that has all these things where it has overpower damage, 6% damage while healthy, plus to maximum fury, 11% fury cost reduction. But now we get a bonus of a legendary power that we got with an essence. Uh, whirlwind periodically pulls nearby enemies to you. This is actually very similar to a rune that you can have, I believe in uh, Diablo 3. There's also like the, the butcher sickle that I believe can pull on enemies. But um, looking at as far as like the things on the item in terms of like what would make a next gen RPG, action RPG. We see that like there's plus to strength over here, percent extra damage to slowed enemies, which would be like uh, impaired enemies as well. Um, that Those are all modifiers that we've seen before. I would really like to see new stuff. And I'm curious to know how you guys feel about this too. Definitely comment down below because they are looking for feedback. And I think that that'd be a great way for us to give them feedback that we want more perhaps depending on what you guys want. For me, I like when there's more interesting things than just uh, percent extra damage or things that we've seen before in previous Diablo games. So they talk about the hunt for items. They mention bandits are fond of maces, crossbows, and boots. And if you're running, uh, if you're hunting for a new pair of pants, you'll do well uh, to kill some of the drown instead. So what they're saying is that there is gonna be certain monster or mob types that will have a higher chance to drop than others, which I think is a great idea. I'm curious to know how you guys feel about that because I know for certain bosses, there's a high chance for them to drop things in Diablo 2, but there are other things in action RPGs where like this item can only drop from this boss. And so it gets kind of boring to farm the same boss again and again. So I like the idea that your chances are maybe higher to get this item um, over here, but once you get it, you can still like go and farm multiple different areas. And I, I like that idea versus an item only being able to drop from one. So let me know guys' thoughts on that. This is gonna be a, the big change over here, the Paragon board. So they had this really, really cool system. Now, this is just probably a placeholder. I'm sure this is not gonna be the final artwork for it, but how it works is you will start on the middle and you're gonna be putting points into uh, the Paragon board. And then certain um, things will have sockets. You're gonna have just like, um, things that will be normal tiles, magic tiles, and rare tiles, and they'll show off exactly what they mean by that. But like I said, you start off in the middle, then once you reach this door, there's going to be another board that you can rotate, and, and Diablo is looking way complex, and I love it, because I love uh, complexity in action RPGs. I think it makes it a lot more interesting, and it, it builds that idea of like next-gen uh, mechanics. So basically, they mentioned some of the things, but I think visually it's much easier to see um, what some of these things can do. So for some of the common ones, we just have like extra to, let's say, a stack. That. with magic there's a resistance uh, over here and i like that it's resistance as a percent versus like in diablo um three where you just get like x amount to this resistance versus a percent and then for the uh rare you can see that we have two modifiers so it grants free per kill uh that's uh, barbarian resource and it uh, requires 175 strength 125 willpower and an eight percent increased maximum fear so relatively still same but it's going to get a little bit more complex in a moment now that with the legendary while your fury is above 50 percent you deal 30 percent more damage that technically exists uh as certain other things that are again from Diablo 3. So in terms of getting super excited about that, I'm like, okay, eh, it's not super exciting until you go to the sockets and you can actually level up these uh, glyphs and sockets. So basically what we showed off right here, there's a socket and you're gonna be able to put something in the socket and depending on the things that affect it uh, would actually be changing. It would almost would be something like a jewel if you guys have played Path of Exile where like the jewel, let's say it can affect like a small, medium or large radius. And depending on what you're doing with this, it can definitely have a lot more modifiers. And that's where I'm really interested in uh, the modifications. Let's actually zoom up on this. So you can see just a uh, thing that you can socket in on the Paragon board, which to mention you'll hit at level uh, I believe it said level 50 is where this starts uh, as I was reading it. Let me just type in uh, 50. Uh, so yeah, so the Paragon board, um, it unlocks for each class at level 50. So 
I'm guessing level 50 is max, but that may not necessarily hold true um, because they may, uh, you know, change things later down the line. But yeah, so level 50 is when you unlock the Paragon board and um, you'll be able to socket these things and we'll talk about the rotation later. So you'll be able to level these things up to how you level them up. I don't know, maybe some form of currency, maybe just XP. Um, but you can see that there's a radius on these as well. So it grants 30% bonus to all nodes within the range. And it's gonna increase the radius like you would, like like said, if you play Path of Exile, small, medium, large uh, in the uh, jewel category, right? And then for every 10 dexterity purchase within the range, you get to deal more damage and then you get 40% bonus uh, to all nodes within range. So it's gonna increase that other stat where you would have like the plus two like strength or whatever uh, for some of the nodes. So that would be kind of cool too. Uh, but that's all nodes, not just small nodes. So that could affect some of the other legendaries if with, it's within range, which is really cool. Then we see this level 15 one, which has a uh, large radius. And it says for every 10 willpower purchase within range, you deal increase uh, overpower damage and also grants for strength for each willpower power purchase within range. So you have things that can be a little bit more complex. Now, in terms of most of these modifiers, as we see them, they're just kind of just damage number changes. I hope we have more interesting things on this Paragon board. Keep in mind, this is earlier iteration, but I want to give them some feedback. I'm curious to know how you guys feel about this as well. Now, like I mentioned before, it gets more complex when you get towards the end where there's like this door that I mentioned before, you're going to be able to select a new Paragon board that you can rotate. And this is the rotation here. So you get to like the little door and remember, you start off from the center and then you work your way out. Then this board can be rotated so you can kind of choose what you want to get a little bit earlier on. It's a very interesting way that they approach it. It, it seems like it's going to be very overwhelming for players that maybe uh, feel easily overwhelmed with action RPGs. Um, but I'm also curious to know, is the board going to be different for every class or do we share all of the same boards? Uh, that's going to be something definitely interesting to see as well, because obviously if we look at some of the things like, you know, Legendary Warbringer, this is for Fury, it should be for Barbarian only, but are they just going to replace that Fury with, let's say, mana or other forms of generation of resource? That's what I'm really wondering. So I hope there's a little bit more complexity to that um, versus just like number changes, which is, is again, pretty much what we saw. Now, as far as visual effects, we're going into more of the gameplay here. Dang, look at this video is into a lot longer than I originally wanted. But they're showing up the different weapon buffs over here, and this is kind of cool. So you can see that there's a weapon here. Uh, make it full screen. So you can see this is a fire weapon buff. You can see the little fire animation on it and they're showing a few different weapons. You can see that looks, it looks like it was Damascus steel. That's cool. And then there's a poison buff. You can see when the weapon is poison. And it's just kind of good uh, little visual flair so you can uh, kind of understand. Maybe for PvP this will matter a little bit more when you see that this guy's holding a poison weapon. Um, they also showed off a video that showed off combat improvements. So uh, what it really shows off is basically the hitboxes on some of these skills. It's basically the green area being the hitbox. And you can see that he's got unspent points. And you can see that the character is level 50 here. And you see over in the top right, zones will have the areas level 48 to 50 on the crawl out forest. And then it's just showing the old uh, damage area. And then they're showing like the new one or the, okay, this is the animated one. Okay, here we go. So you can see kind of how the skill works. But in terms of gameplay, it's mostly just this kind of stuff where you're just seeing like the different like animations, uh, which is really cool. I'm glad that they're just showing us as much content as possible. There's also this really cool thing that they did mention with the uh, blood as well as like the monster structure. They're mentioning when you like hit a monster a certain way, depending on the area that you hit it, it will actually react to it. So if you, you're hitting like the legs, you know, obviously the, the way that the monster like, kind of reacts to it, this is actually really cool. So I'll also show off the blood on the uh, characters, which is uh, just kind of a little nice touch uh, when they actually do fight the enemies. Uh, but in terms of gameplay, I would say there's nothing really too new other than like showing off the Paragon thing, which I'm really curious to see where they take it. But yeah, okay, now they'll actually attack the target. I hope we actually get like a dummy to like test DPS on. That would be a really nice thing uh, that I feel like a lot of other action RPGs don't, just simply don't offer to be able to test because it looks like this thing is just kind of just standing there. So that's my guess, but uh, they're just showing like the blood on the character and the different uh, transformation. Looks like that is going to be like a druid. Um, and then over here, we also have the uh, VFX skill driven uh, deaths. 
So there's different ways to obviously kill enemies, like you can shatter them and you can set them on fire. And the kind of way that they interact, you can see like the, just the bones are left on the enemy. Because remember, these enemies will have like an inner structure to them. When I showed you guys that like muscle and the skeletal structure, this is what I would consider a next gen form of a game. Now, obviously that shouldn't really affect gameplay too much, but I do know in Diablo 2, if you shatter the enemy, then you can't use uh, like corpse fine with like a barbarian skill. So that could actually matter for gameplay. It might not just be for visuals or if there are certain abilities or certain things that require a corpse. And if there's no corpse because you shattered it, that would make sense. Um, or if there's like a charred corpse or like an enemy was killed by fire, maybe there could be some uh, other interaction. Looks like when he dodged, there was like some sort of puddle of some poison. And you can see now the uh, enemy has a little poison icon right underneath him. I'm not sure if this is a legendary or what, but definitely looking pretty good for the new gameplay as well. I'm really excited about it. You can still see that there's potions to actually pick up. I know some people uh, prefer the uh, style of Diablo 3 where you're able to just have a potion that's on a cooldown. Or um, if you guys like Diablo um, 2 style where you actually have different potions. I wish we had a completely full row of potions. Uh, kind of like how we have it in Path of Exile so we can modify our potions as well. But... Um, that pretty much sums up, for the most part, what I wanted to go over. And they talk about like, just different improvements. And like I said, I showed you guys most of the uh, visuals here uh, to show off and the uh, like kind of newer changes and how they've evolved on the, the uh, gameplay side of things. But they are, are also showing off different forms of resource. You can see that there's free shatter, so you can break frozen monsters into pieces with char. You singe the corpses of monsters with lightning burn it scorches the monster flesh leaving the remains of a charred skeleton that looks really cool but like i said i'm more interested in seeing how does that actually affect actual gameplay um because like i said it, it can it, it it may have uh, some way of doing that and then you can see that uh there's other uh death types that the barbarian can trick so we basically looked at the sorceress one uh but you can crush decapitate you can cut in half uh break lower limbs um uh, that's really, really cool looking. And then you can see that there's the rogues. They have shadow clones, so that's also making a return. So if you guys like that idea, um, hopefully that will be like a, a variant that you can play. I know in Diablo 3 we had those, there was a season of shadow clones, but there's the Haunt of Oxo amulet, as well as um, there are some other ways to get shadow clones. But for the most part, it's not like an actual build, unless we're talking about the season where, uh, of the clones. But different things that rogues can trigger, they can eviscerate, they can shadow, they can freeze and shadow. So there is some overlap in between. They can poison, um, and then they can flay the enemy and then leaving the muscle structure intact. So it could be like when the enemy is hit with one of these, you're gonna deal bonus damage. That's my guess is what they plan to do. And then so they have like the druid over here, we have roadkill, we have devour. Um, so if they're, uh, you know, the corpse is consumed, I'm guessing for maybe like some sort of necromancer um, class, if they plan to do that, there might not be a body to corpse explode. So that, that could matter. Like I said, that's the stuff that I'm most interested in. And basically they said, that's, uh, that's going to be it. Like I said, I'll link the full thing if you guys want to read it, but I don't want to extend this video out longer than necessary. But here's my thoughts on these changes. Like I said, I like complexity. This is great, but I think that it'd be much cooler. Like this is the stuff that I like, whirlwind pulls enemies, but we saw that in Diablo 3. If you're going to add some of those things, that's cool. But I want to see new things in these blog posts that are going to be blowing my mind. For example, Barbarian has multiple weapons that we can swap through. Maybe we can swap through into a weapon class that normally wouldn't be for a weapon class, but that's going to be something on a legendary uh, node that we actually take on the tile or with some of these glyphs and sockets. Maybe we can use a skill from a completely different class. Maybe like there's a druid legendary socket that lets us unlock one skill on a druid. That's where I like the complexity um, where you still have the ability to basically uh, not have to create new content, but let us hybrid out and let us have more complex designs in our character versus just looking at this. It's a lot of it is just number bonuses on damage. You deal increased damage, increased damage, bonus and numbers. All of these are numerical changes changes i want more than numerical changes i want more creative side of things but that's my thoughts you guys can completely disagree but i'd love to know how you guys feel about this down below but anyways thanks for watching guys if you guys enjoyed the video drop a like on it if you do want to see more diablo updates as well as other content and this is your first time here hit subscribe turn the bell and you'll definitely see more very soon but this quarterly update was amazing i'm i'm really hyped up about this new paragon board the complexity definitely seems like it's got to have a lot of potential but take care guys and i'll catch you in the next one peace